Hi folks, I'm Larry Wingate, and I wanna welcome you to the Ultimate Business Summit video. Today, you are gonna learn from my friends, Randy Pennington and Scott McCain, as we talk about two very important subjects that each one of you is facing in your life, as well as in your business. Today, we're gonna to talk about change and disruption, both hot topics. Disruption is a very hot buzzword these days, and these two guys are the experts on these two topics. So let's start with Scott McCain on the topic of change. You know, it, it's an old story, but I think it has a lot of value to this day, and that is when Christopher Columbus sailed on the maps they carried, in the uncharted water literally were pictures of dragons. The cartographers put pictures of dragons and underneath the dragons they wrote these words, beyond this there be dragons. You see even back in 1492 when Columbus sailed the ocean blue, the thing that scared people, concerned people, was not just change, it was the unknown that accompanies change. As leaders, part of what we have to do is to help our people understand the voyage that they're about to set out on. Now look, in today's world, how in the world do you know? There's so many unpredictables out there, but one of the challenges of dealing with change is helping our teams deal with the challenge of the unknown. So let, let me jump off of that, Scott, because I love that picture that you created. Beyond here, there are dragons. And if you look at what's going on in the world right now, um, I'm reminded that Elon Musk doesn't like artificial intelligence at all. This from a guy who's a technology guy, and he doesn't like artificial intelligence at all. And because of it, and I think one of the reasons why is, it is that fear of the unknown. And the fact is, we've always had a problem with understanding what's next. And humans have this incredible tendency to always fear the worst about what they think is coming next. Uh, I was reminded that when the telegraph was first invent uh, invented, one of the things that they said about the telegraph is it was too fast for the truth. <laughs> and and so, you know, to, to echo your point, that is one of the things that leaders have to do is to help people define what the truth is. And here's, here's two ways that I think that I found that leaders can do that. One is this notion that people support what they help create. So leaders need to be helping people figure out what the future needs to be and how do they create the future and how do they discover that future. Uh, I like to go back to the old TV show, Wagon Train. And the Wagon Train TV show, the, the wagon master would drive the train across the prairie, but they always sent out scouts. And the job of the scouts was to identify where are the hostels and where are the where's the water. And when you think about that's the challenge, that's fi figure out where the dragons are or where the next land is, it's the same thing. Uh, and I think that you leaders can involve people in doing that. People support what they help create. The other thing that's really important to remember is that no one ever argues with their own ideas. So the more that we can help as leaders help people not just understand what's coming next, but craft our response to that, then I think they support that change um, more often and more effectively. And Randy, I, th I think you've just identified one of the challenges that, that organizations get into, businesses regardless of size, uh, it, professionals regardless of their, their industry, that they get into with the problem of disruption. And that is people support what they've created. Therefore, they get so bound by the products or services that they are currently delivering, if they played a role in that, to let go of that is incredibly, incredibly challenging we see it all the time is that, you know, we, we let's, let's take last year's business plan, erase the year, add the new dates and gosh, we're not selling enough. Let's work harder at the old plan rather than saying, maybe we need to come up with some new ideas. Now, I think you're exactly right in terms of the investment that people have in their own ideas and in their own products and services. Yet that's a double-edged sword. And it's part of where, we get in problems with disruption. It, it amazes me that it, it, it seems so, in so many cases to take the outsider to revolutionize things. In other words, Nokia and Motorola didn't come up with the iPhone. 
you know, we, we have so many examples. Yellow Cab didn't come up with Uber when, when they worked in it 24-7. It's, it's part of why, uh, I know both of us use this example of Netflix that, that really disrupted themselves. In other words, they disrupted Blockbuster, tried to sell themselves to Blockbuster. Blockbuster so invested in their own idea of stores didn't buy Netflix, as, the, as we know the story so well. But, but Netflix also then disrupted themselves by going from streaming to DVD, or going from DVD to streaming. Take a look at Tower Records. Uh, I wrote about this a while back. Tower Records had all of the relationships in the industry. They had all of the knowledge about the industry that they needed. Why didn't they see the movement from albums and vinyl to CDs to downloads to streaming? As, as, they were in a 24-7. Why did it take somebody, you know, outside uh, the Spotify to come in and, and revolutionize the industry? Even Apple didn't see it coming. So the, the challenge is, yes, we have to get people comfortable about the future. And yes, we have to get people excited about their ideas. But at the same time, we have to put a little bit of discomfort in there that we won't get so comfortable about it that somebody can come along and blow us out of the water. Well, Scott, I mean, you raised a great point, and that's why I think it's really important. Um, disruption and change are related, but they're not exactly the same because people support what they help create when they're responding to change. But when you're responding to change, it's not the same as being proactive about change. And what you're talking about is really how do we switch that lever, if you will, from being reactive to change, which, by the way, most people are, and in today's world, if you do that, you're too late, to how do we become proactive about change so that we're constantly disrupting ourselves, eating our own dog food is what, who, I forget who used to say that. Uh, I think Bezos from Amazon used to say we have to eat our own dog food. Um, but the the challenges from a leadership standpoint is to create that discomfort. And that's, that's a lot of what leaders do is they, great leaders create discomfort about the present. Uh, Reed Hastings did that so very well at Netflix is creating that discomfort. So when leaders get comfortable with the present, then it's, natural that their companies are going to get comfortable with the present. So the real challenge is, as a leader, yes, you have to be responsive today to those changes that are coming at you. And we all want to be faster and better and cheaper and friendlier. At the same time, you have to create a level of discomfort. So one of the things that we started talking about, and we'll talk about at the summit, is that when you think about it, all leadership is really change leadership because we're trying to get people to continually change to realize that there's only two reasons why you get disrupted, I believe. Um, one is a, a natural disaster, which you can't have any control over. It's just one of those things that happen. If you, if you operate a company on the big island of Hawaii as we're recording this, then you've had a natural disaster disrupt you. There's not much you can do about that. But the other reason is, and you hit on it, it's that you become complacent. And that's what happens more times than not, is people become complacent. Companies become complacent when leaders become complacent. All right, all right guys. So, yeah. all right. Uh, you know, I spoke years ago to Sonic, where the founder of Sonic Drive-In said, the biggest problem all of these franchisees will have will be their own success. The biggest enemy of success is success. And success causes complacency. We get so used to doing it the way we've done it that that disruption is something we almost have to look forward to. And we do have to go out and learn how to change and be more responsive. So, folks, if you've liked this discussion, believe me, this is the tip. I mean the tiniest tip of the iceberg. At the Ultimate Business Summit, August 16th and 17th, it runs from 9 to 5 on August the 16th, 9 until 1 on August the 17th, in Las Vegas, Nevada. At that summit, you will hear all of these ideas and more. In fact, at the summit, we're going to give you 100 ideas on 10 different topics that you can take away and immediately implement in your business. Plus, 
This will be a client-driven summit where you get to bring up everything that you're going through, the challenges that you face, the way that you're being disrupted. And you can talk to us about those and we will share our too many years of expertise <laughs> that we've gotten from speaking to all kinds of associations, organizations, and businesses around the world. So here's all you have to do. Go to www.ultimatebusinesssummit.com and register for the event. We look forward to seeing you there. You'll get a whole lot more of what you see, have seen right here on this. And we promise that you will get your questions answered. So please join us in August in Las Vegas.